Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. If you're struggling to get everyone on the same page, working in the same direction, you may be suffering from a lack of purpose. In our book, Speed of Purpose, we discuss the importance for defining a clear and compelling purpose that then gets wrapped around your people, performance, and processes of your organization through a set of accelerators that put purpose into motion. You can find a link to Speed of Purpose on our website, gapology.org, or just do a search for it on Amazon.com. And as for tonight, Mark and I discuss an often overlooked but important element in establishing an understanding around the skills necessary to achieve winning results by role for your team. So let's go ahead and jump right in with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, Brian. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I know you're out playing tennis tonight. How was that? How did that turn out? Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, good. Any let's... any any time playing tennis is good. Yeah. Well, that's good. And I know you've been, uh, you know, working on your skills for a long time and, uh, you know, you have a lot of competencies there. And I know tonight our topic is going to be on competencies. I thought that was a an interesting correlation. You know, I think it's important to build your skills and, and knowledge and things and really grow those competencies overall. And, uh, you know, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this topic tonight. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great topic. Uh, it aligns very much with gapology and closing gaps. Uh, one of our one of our concerns, just in many of the organizations we interact with, is they really haven't defined the core competencies by role. And a core competency would be the skill, uh, the skill that's needed, the skills. You know, let's call it three to five that are needed by role. And if you take the most critical roles in the organization. Having the core competencies defined for those roles really drive the results and drive the business. So this is somewhat of a call to action. Hey, you need to define the core competencies and you need to go after it. So we thought we'd address it uh, uh, tonight and uh, go for it. Yeah, no, I, th- I think this will be a great conversation. I know to a larger companies, I think they look at this, but I don't think they, they look at it the same way that we would through the lens of Gapology. And for any of the smaller organizations out there, I don't think they look at it at all. Uh, so, you know, these are going to be some great tips, some actionable things that people can really do. Yeah. So this, this could be of great significance to many of you out there. So a core competency is just a fancy term for a skill, you know, so... We probably are pretty clear on the skills that we need in an, in an electrician or a plumber, but, you know, do you define them effectively for a regional manager as an example, you know, and so within your organization, what are the key roles and start there and, and define the core competencies. Uh, we believe that three to five is the right number. Uh, so somewhere uh, fairly narrow. You know, for each role, they really become critical. And many organizations, again, are not uh, coming up with them. And the challenge there is that if you're interviewing an external candidate to join that team, let's say a regional manager, if you're not interviewing to the core competencies for that role within your organization, you're likely going to make some big mistakes. And the uh, evidence of those core competencies the map to them is likely right there on your team and you can find it and again, develop an interview process, whether it's ex- external or internal for promotion that equals the competencies that you're looking for, you know, in a given role. Yeah. I think, uh, well, there's a couple of key pieces. I think you just hit on there. Uh, I, I like your analogy around uh, electrician or plumber, you know, those competencies are, are clearly defined. They have to be licensed and they have to have the skills to be able to do those, those roles. Uh, for leadership, it's much different. And I think doing this with intent, uh, where on purpose you're building this stuff out, can really set people for, up for success, especially those emerging leaders, those, those uh, leaders that are new to, to the leadership role, that don't always have that clear path 
aligning it with with core competencies, everything, you know, from the interview process, I think can really set them on the right path. Yeah. So picture, picture everyone in, in the interview, um, interview or role, uh, those on your team that are going to interview people having clearly defined five core competencies that they are interviewing toward versus an interview that's about chemistry, you know, or <laughs> something, something else yeah. that, that will right. not work uh, at the at the same level. You have to get lucky there. So you know whether it again it's a it's a new hire into the organization or a promotion. The core competencies and the questions that need to be asked to identify that core competency to bring that out to give you the ability to score a core competency have to be have to be developed, and uh, that. That's a total game changer. So the the thing I was getting at earlier is you likely have already in front of you the answers, and that would be your top performers. So your top performers in a given role likely, most likely, possess the core competencies, the skills that you want in a new hire or in a promotion. And so therefore, you need to define them and uh, develop then the questions that would uh, illuminate that core competency in the interview process. And you're well on your way to being able to choose people to join the team or be promoted into a, a different level, you know, that will truly accelerate your performance and success. Yeah. So often interviews are just kind of willy nilly where, uh, you know, I've seen this over and over again, where the interviewer, doesn't even prepare, doesn't even look at the resume and look at the job description and see what aligns, um, you know, the, and they just walk into an interview and just kind of wing it. Um, and there's so much risk there. Uh, number one, risk in not determining which is the right candidate, but also I think from just a legal perspective, you know, if you're not interviewing all candidates with the same base questions, you really risk uh, discrimination and, you know, that there's so many legal risks there as well. So, you know, looking at those top performers and, and intentionally building a set of core competencies from what really matters for your organization um, and building that out and building that formal interview process, um, you know, from that, I think can really set you up for success. Yeah. We, um, we had a, a, a group that we were working with that brought, they, they needed some new leaders at a critical level. And they had some top performers already in that role, but they needed more of them. So they brought the top performers in to meet with the group that was going to conduct the interviews for people being hired externally. And they interviewed the top performers and understood, therefore, why they were successful. So they interviewed them about their success. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me, you know, why you're doing so well in this and this and this. And from that, they were able to develop and clearly see the core competencies that they needed in this new hire and total game changer. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, that should just be built into your normal leadership rhythm anyway, you know, having gap meetings. So you're identifying who's who's performing at the top of your team and who's performing at the bottom of your team and interviewing those people and seeing the the gaps there, right? So looking at the differences, I think you can do that on a, just a everyday or a weekly basis. But having a dedicated time right before you're going into interviewing to replace people or whatever, um, I think that can really level set the entire interviewer population so everybody's on the same page. Well, and it should help you become clear on the core competencies yeah. by role. Yep. The uh, You bring up another good point, and that would be not only do your top performers already point to the core competencies you need, your bottom performers point to the gaps in core competencies. Yeah. Yep. And so to to speak to them and understand why they're not performing will help you immensely again in the interview process. And then somebody should develop a, a single question or two per core competency 
that really illuminates that. And those become the the interview questions. They need to be open-ended and uh, they would have some follow-up questions, but they really will lead you to the ability to score within a level where where an individual is in, in that core competency. And uh, again, once you know, again, where the top performers are, that helps you immensely evaluate uh, someone who's coming, you know, into the organization uh, from outside. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in fact, uh, years ago, I actually built out an interview process for an organization I was working with. Uh, it was a three-step interview process. So there's three different uh, interview phases the candidates went through. And and we built out the interview guides to tie directly to the questions, tie directly to the core competencies and also the core values. So each at each level of the interview, they were asked a series of questions um, that were not duplicated in the other steps in the interview process. So, you know, you can really put a lot of time into designing this where you really do go after specific elements of the core competencies. And then you can really train the interviewers on what to look for, what evidence to look for, um, you know, at each, you know, for each of those questions, you can really build this out. And I think training the interviewers, I think that's really a key to success overall. Yeah. So there's, there's many uses of, of the core competencies, but uh, the best use again is to hire great people. Um, I'll give you just for any of you that are still not clear on core competencies. I've got a list in front of me of an organization that uh, we've worked with. So, so this is the this is the list of five core competencies that they're looking for in a regional manager. So, a regional manager over multiple uh, business units, dozens of um, direct reports. So the first one is results driven. So they want somebody who really has a drive for results. The results are measured each week, each month, each quarter, and everyone is ranked and you have to be about results and achieving results. So results driven is the first one. You do not want someone who's passive around results, who doesn't care how they're ranked. That that won't work. So results driven is key. The second one is executor. So that means someone that gets stuff done. Uh, They set deadlines, they have projects and they achieve them on time and have great follow-up skills. So someone who executes projects uh, is, is key to the regional manager role in this organization. The third, and these are not really in an order by the way, but they interview in this order. The third is talent developer. So, they're looking for someone who has a proven track record of developing people and specifically developing their direct reports. So promotions and, you know, just great achievement and a process that they've entered into becomes critical. And there's, it's easy to determine if someone's a talent developer. Uh, The fourth is managerial courage. Someone that has the skill and ability to have tough conversations with vendors, with employees, with, you know, whoever it may be. And the fifth is a servant leader, someone who's there ultimately to serve their team, serve the organization, serve the customer, someone that has that mindset. So that set of five creates a very complete top performing regional manager. Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I think, I think each of those, um, they're very unique in their own ways. And when you just picture a regional manager, I mean, those are definitely, uh, I would say, five of the things that can really uh, create success. And, and then, you know, I think for the listeners out there, you know, think about the roles that you're hiring for and, and what makes sense there. But, um, you know, really, and, and there's some, you can go online. I mean, there's certainly lots of different resources for uh, finding these different things. But I think the key is what you said at the beginning – Look at your top performers. All the evidence is right there. Yeah, the answer to the test is already in front of you. Right. Uh, go, Go find what it is. So once you as an organization know these five core competencies for a key level, you become more powerful. You become more successful. You can likely 
use these core competencies or, or at least some of them at a level above, at a level below, you're, you're well on your way to fully understanding this. Again, they can be used uh, for the interview process. They're critical for that. They can also be used, though, for uh, evaluations, you know, annual evaluation process. Uh, they can be used for training and development. So if your entire team is lacking in results-driven skill set, core competencies, then you can train to that and work work towards achieving a higher level for the entire team. So they, be, they become uh, part of the, the training and development team's targets. You know, let's get everybody to a level five if you were scoring a one to five in this core competency. You know, just really, it, it's sort of like our purpose, uh, you know, our speed of purpose book that we talked about, just making sure it's wrapped around your organization, you know, building a clear and compelling purpose and then wrapping it around your organization. Uh, you know, competencies really, it, it aligns with that in a certain way. Uh, you know, when you build this into your interview process, your hiring process, and then rolling it into your training, rolling it into your coaching, rolling it into your performance appraisals, it really takes the employee through that whole employee life cycle, uh, ensuring that everyone's on the same page about what's really expected. Yeah, and if um, if the organization gets better in those core competencies each year, um, the results can really be incredible. And you can be, you know, leading in the industry. Right. So Absolutely. having, having you know, three to five core competencies by role, specifically in starting with the key roles, uh, is absolutely uh, a ticket to success and absolutely a way to close gaps in the organization. They have a tremendous impact on the knowledge gap, on the importance gap, on the action gap, and uh, they, they move the results. So mm -hmm. we wanted to share that with you uh, today and uh, motivate you if you don't have the core competencies to find by role to go after that. And uh, I'll turn it to you for uh, closing remarks, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that sounds great, Mark. I think this is a good place to leave it. It's pretty simple. You know, just uh, devote some time to it. Build it into your leadership rhythm. Uh, you know, look at how you can wrap this stuff into your role, into your team's role, um, all the way through the whole employee life cycle. I think there's a lot of upside there. And, uh, you know, let us know how you're doing on this stuff. If you have questions, make sure to reach out. Uh, contact at gapology.org is our email. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, shoot us an email. Let us know how things are going. If you have questions, let us know as well. Okay. Thanks, right. Brian. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks a lot, Mark. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you then. Okay. Bye. All right, that'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology or Speed of Purpose, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.